let's look at some examples of how we can use that formula. So the first one's going to be really simple. Um, we want to use the right rectangular approximation formula to approximate the integral of x squared from 1 to 3. So we're trying to find the area under the x squared curve between the x values of 1 and 3. And we're going to do that using this formula here that we just derived. One of the benefits of having a formula like this is that we don't, we don't really need to know what it looks like. Um, it, may, it may help, and I'm not saying you shouldn't draw a picture, but with this formula here, we, we can do this problem without the picture. Um, and just like, well, just like anything else, the fewer steps that we have to do to get to an answer, the better or the more efficient. Um, so if we can, we can leave the picture out, that would be good. We don't want to have to draw a picture every time we do an integral problem. Um, so somebody said we should find delta x first, and I agree with that. Um, we, need to f we need to figure out what, what we're going to plug into this, and so we can just start with delta x. So let's, let's figure out what delta x is. Uh, B minus A is going to be 3 minus 1, right? Divided by N. What's N going to be? 4. So delta X is going to be 1 half. Okay. Uh, is there anything else in this formula we need to figure out? We know N. That's going to be 4. Um, we know the function. That's going to be X squared, right? And we know what A is. What's A going to be? 1. And I is just the variable for our or summation, and then the delta x here, which is one half. So we can go ahead and set this up. Um, so for this problem, the R RAM approximation, I think that's redundant since the A in RAM stands for approximation. Um, so R RAM 4 is going to equal one half times the sum. I'm going to, this, this step I would probably skip, but I'm going to put it in here. So we're going to find f of 1 plus i over 2. Does everybody understand why I got i over 2? It's i times 1 half. I think that's just an easier, simpler way to write it. Um, I would probably skip this step and just put the 1 plus i over 2 directly into the function. So this is going to equal 1 half times the sum. I should probably put my limits on the sum, shouldn't I? I is going to range from where to where? 1 to 4. Okay. Um, so 1 half times the sum as I ranges from 1 to 4 of 1 plus I over 2 squared. Now we just plug in our I values. Um, so this is going to be 1 half times, if we put 1 in for I, we get 3 halves in here. 3 halves squared would be 9 fourths. Put 2 in for i, we get 2 in there. 2 squared is 4. Put 3 in there, we get 5 halves squared, which is 25 fourths. And then we put 4 in there, that's our last one. We get 3 squared, which is 9. I'd probably... I, I would like to leave this in a fraction form. Um, so we have what, 13 would be 52 fourths. So 77, 86 fourths, 86 eighths. Good to me. That doesn't look good to me. How about 43 fourths? Which would be 10 and 3 fourths, or 10.75. How accurate do you think this is? Probably not very. We only use four rectangles. Um, is this going to be an over approximation or an under approximation? Over. Over. So x squared from one to three is going to be increasing, right? So if we're using right rectangles, the right end point is going to be higher than the left end point, so it's going to be an over approximation. Um, so we would expect the actual answer to be uh, to be less than 10.75. Probably, since we only use four rectangles, probably significantly less, right? All right, so let's try to make it a little bit better. Uh, let's use 100 rectangles. <laughs> okay, so we're not actually going to do 100 computations here. But let's set up the formula for 100 rectangles and just see what that would look like. 
that won't be so bad. So, first of all, let's start with delta x, just like we did last time. So delta x is going to equal 3 minus 1 over 100, which is 1 50th. So, that means each subinterval is going to be really narrow, right? 1 50th of one unit, whatever the unit is. Unless the units are like light years. 1 50th of a light year is not very narrow, but probably not going to be that. Um, so we plug it into the formula. Our RAM of, for 100 rectangles is going to be delta x, 1 50th times the sum. This time i is going to range from what to what? 1 to 100. That means we have 100 things to add together. That's going to suck. Um, and then we, I'm going to go ahead and plug it straight into the function. So a is still 1 plus we're going to have i times delta x so that would be i over 50. And that's going to be squared. Now, what, what you'll notice here is we're going to get um, bigger numbers here. or I'm sorry, not bigger numbers, but a bigger number here overall. But then we're multiplying it by a narrower delta x or a smaller delta x. Um, and so the, the bigger number here is going to balance out with the smaller number here. Um, and so we should get an area approximation that's really close. Now, the trouble with this... And, and we're going to want to remember this. That we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, the trouble with this is, right now, that would take 100 computations. And to be honest with you, the computations wouldn't even be that simple. Um, if, if I had to do that, I would probably, have, I'd probably try to do it in Excel or something like that. Um, you could do formulas in Excel that would be able to do that pretty quickly. I wouldn't want to do it on my calculator because... Um, well, I guess you could use a sigma function on your calculator. That would work too. Right? You guys all know how to do that? Okay. So let's, let's look at it one more time. We still want to approximate the same integral, but let's, let's generalize it for any number of rectangles. Whether we're using one rectangle or a million rectangles or anything in between or anything bigger. Um, can't go smaller than one. Uh, let's see what that would look like. So if we're using n rectangles, what's delta x going to be? 2 over n. And so the right rectangular approximation for n rectangles is going to give us 2 over n times the sum as i ranges from where to where? 1 to n of 1 plus... 2i over n. Squared. And this is just a general formula that says, okay, we can plug anything in for n, um, and it'll, it'll give us an approximation of this. Every single approximation we're going to get for this is going to be what? A, an over-approximation. Okay, so no matter how close we get, we're still going to be a little bit over. Um, you can actually kind of picture this as an asymptotic function. So this is a function of n. We can plug in different values of n and get an output for it. Um, and that function is going to approach the, the exact value of this integral. So it's, it's going to be an over approximation. Let's say the exact value is right there. Um, this function is going to approach that and get closer and closer, but it's never actually going to equal it because um, it's always going to be an over approximation. All right. If we can figure out, though, what this asymptote is for that particular function, then we can know exactly what this integral is. Does that make sense? Okay.